Are you fed up with using the bathroom several times a night? Let's talk about nocturia, urinating at night when you should be sleeping. It can drive people crazy. It can be a real pain in the butt because it interferes with your sleep. So I'm going to show you a very commonly overlooked cause to nocturia. And you're going to be very excited to hear what I'm going to say about this because finally you're going to find something that really works. As you're trying to get solutions, you go online, the first page you're going to see Cleveland Clinic, WebMD, Medline Plus, all these credible authority sites. It's the same information. And they all say it's a normal part of aging, which really is absolutely not true. And they all recommend medications. But some of them have alternatives, right? They have alternatives. They'll say, well, you know, you might want to try an herb, but there's no evidence and they could be dangerous. And herbs are not regulated by the FDA. The safety of drugs are regulated by the FDA. Well, I guess after the FDA finds that it's safe, it pretty much stays on the market, right? I mean, we don't have recalls. We don't have drugs that end up being very harmful. I am being very sarcastic. There is an analysis in 2011 on adverse drug reactions, okay? In the U.S. alone, 2.1 million serious injuries, 128,000 deaths from drugs. But drugs are regulated by the FDA. I mean, how many people do you know that died from an herb or had a lot of serious reactions from herbs? Is it very common? That being said, the information on nocturia, they usually say it's a bladder infection, could be a kidney infection, could be a prostate enlargement. But what's fascinating is there's one thing that is not listed on any of these sites. Okay. So just envision what the kidneys are. The kidneys are a filter and they filter blood. And what controls this filtration rate as well as the production of urine, okay, is the concentration of various things, salts, sugars, waste products, red blood cell breakdown. And so you have all these different concentrated particles in there and some of it's recycled, some of it does not get recycled. When the urine's produced, it goes down these little tubes into the bladder. And what's interesting about people that, that get up like several times a night um, they're not urinating a full bladder of urine, right? It could be just a little bit. So what is up with that? There must be something going on with the sensors in the bladder itself and maybe the valve of the bladder. So in the bladder, we have a combination of smooth muscle and valves and nerves that are controlled by a part of the nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's the, like the opposite or partner to the sympathetic nervous system, which is the flight or fight mechanism. This is why you need to relax when you urinate, right? If you're stressed in some way, um, you know, it'd be harder to eliminate. So I'm just kind of giving you a little background here for what I'm going to talk about. So the bladder is controlled by the uh, parasympathetic nervous system, which another name for that is called rest and digest. There's another thing um, related to sugar. When there's too much sugar in the blood, okay, that gets filtered, there's something that occurs that's called, and this is, might be a new term for you, osmotic diuresis. Now, what does that mean? Osmotic has to do with that, uh, the particles or concentration of sugar. Diuresis means increased amount of urine that is coming out. So apparently in the little filtration rate in the kidneys, if there's too much sugar, that filter will push out the sugar and wherever there's sugar, there's water. Water follows sugar. So we get this excessive amount of uh, water and sugar with this osmotic diuresis thing. And so that really kind of um, explains why a diabetic, for example, has this excessive urination. In fact, diabetics um, have like a 49% increase of nocturia. Someone with hypertension has a 39% increased risk of having that. And someone who is obese has like a 200% increase risk of having nocturia. And obstructive sleep apnea is at risk, like I think it's 40% of having this excessive urine situation at night. Now, what's interesting about the sleep apnea situation is I found this one paper that did this research on the relationship between sleep apnea 
and kidney physiology. That includes the bladder. And to my knowledge, this is like the only study that was ever done on this. But they found that when you have obstructive breathing, you create hypoxia in the body. That's a lack of oxygen. Blood pressure does go up, but your parasympathetic nervous system goes down. Remember that thing that controls not just the smooth muscle around your bladder, but the nerves down there and the valves? Well, it just so happens that they found an increase association between hypoxia and diuresis because apparently this lack of oxygen can affect your bladder, which is fascinating. So that's an interesting connection. But now the question is, what is behind sleep apnea? What's behind obesity? What's behind diabetes and hypertension? And the answer is insulin resistance. And there's some interesting research. I'm going to put all this down below showing that insulin resistance can cause nocturia. Now, I did two other videos on this topic, which I'm going to put a link down below. And the comments from people who tried it and it worked are overwhelming. I mean, you're going to be blown away of how many people just made some slight changes in their diet and got rid of this problem within days. So how do we fix insulin resistance? Stop snacking at night and basically stop snacking in general. In fact, do intermittent fasting. Basically, you're just cutting down the number of meals, not the calories, just the, the frequency of eating. It's going to greatly help insulin resistance. And number two, uh, start cutting down your carbs to less than 30 grams per day. Those two actions are the most powerful thing you can do, and you're going to see amazing changes. Now, a couple of the things you can do to add to speed things up, take some apple cider vinegar with some water right before your meals, just like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. What does that do? That is a really good blood sugar regulating natural remedy. Okay. The other thing you could do is exercise on a regular basis. That is another potent way to improve insulin resistance. And if you have any questions on what to eat, I have so much data on this topic on my website. Um, you can just download exactly what to eat. I'll put drberg.com down below. You can just click that. But if you want some hope that you can be helped, okay, check out this video right here and read all the comments of people who started to fix their insulin resistance. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.